Good afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to explain the part two of unit test two, reasoning and proof for geometry. The first question we have, write a paragraph proof for the following conjecture. So we're going to have a diagram which is triangle PQR and we're going to have given information and something to prove. Let's take a look at the given information. We have um, segment QS by six angle PQR. So QS is a segment that divides this angle, PQR, okay? And then they're giving us the following information that the measurement of angle PQS is 45 degrees. So P PQS, this angle, is 45 degrees, okay? And you're gonna prove that angle PQR is a right triangle. So on your own, I'm gonna explain what this is about and based on my explanation, you're going to write your own paragraph proof, okay? So, so you're going to explain it in your own words here. So what definitions, what theorems are happening here? So, we have the definition of bisect, right? What does that mean? That you're going to have this segment, which is QS, that's going to bisect angle PQR in half. Bisect means that it's going to divide it in half, okay? That means that if angle PQS is 45, that means that angle SQR is also 45 degrees because that's the definition of bisector, okay? And if you add 40, how are you going to prove it? Well, by the definition of bisect, if I add angle PQS and angle SQR, both of them, if I add 45 degrees plus the 45 degrees is going to be equal to 90 degrees. And remember that right triangles are equal to 90 degrees, okay, by the definition of right triangles. So I already gave you different, different definitions, so make sure you write it down, everything that I explained. Then the second and third problem that we have here, we're going to be using the list of definitions that I shared with you guys. So you're going to go to Canvas, you're going to go to Modules in Geometry, and then you're going to go to Download, Please, List of Geometric Definitions, Theorems, and Properties. You need that list in order to answer question two and three. We reviewed some examples for the previous quizzes, so make sure you go back to the lesson and go back to your notes. So I'm going to explain the first part, which is definitions. So complementary angles, we reviewed this before, but I'm going to review them again. It says that the measurement of angle X, measurement of angle Y, both of them are going to be equal to 90 degrees, okay? Then we also have supplementary angles, definition of supplementary angle. That's when you add two angles and they're going to be added to 180 degrees. Then we have an acute an angle that measures less than 90 and greater than zero. Right angle, okay, that is what I just reviewed in problem one. Definition of right angle, an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees, okay. Then we also have the obtuse angle, it's an angle that measures less than 180 and greater than 90 degrees. The straight angle, an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. So it's any straight line is 180 degrees, which is half a circle, which is 360 degrees. Then we have a midpoint. It's a point that divides the line segment into two congruent line segments. For example, AB is congruent. This sign that you see here, the equal sign, the little curve, is congruent that they have the same measurement. So segment AB, if it's five centimeters, then segment BC is also going to be five centimeters. They have this tick marks, these little lines, that means that they're congruent. They're going to have the same measurement. And the angle bisector, which is problem one, that, that's the definition of angle bisector. So I'm helping you out here. We had the definition of right angle for number problem number one and definition of angle bisector. That means that you're going to have a segment, BD, divides angle ABC in two congruent angles. So if angle ABD is 50 degrees, that means that angle DBC is also 50 degrees. So both angles are going to be congruent. 
Then we have the perpendicular bisector, a line that intersects a line segment in this midpoint and creates a right triangle. Here you have a 90 degree angle. And these two segments are going to be congruent, that's why it has two tick marks. Parallel lines, lines that never intersect, and they're going to have some arrows indicating it. Perpendicular lines, lines that meet at a right triangle. Here we have a 90 degree angle. A right triangle, it's a triangle that has a right triangle or a 90 degree angle. Then we have the linear pair, which we also reviewed in class. There are two adjacent angles that form a line. Here you have it, all this angle is 180 degrees. They're linear pair, two angles that have their adjacent next to each other and have a side in common. Vertical angles are formed by intersecting lines. Angle A and angle B are opposite to each other and they're going to have the same measurement. If angle A is 30 degrees, then angle B is also 30 degrees. And triangle, similar triangle, we have a review that part, so I'm not going to be explaining it yet. Then this we did review in class, and you might use it on the TGA, angle congruent postulates. Two angles are going to have the same measurement. They're going to be congruent. Congruent means same value. So remember this symbol we use for congruent and it's the same as equal sign. Okay. Then angle addition postulate, you're going to add two angles. Angle ADB, which is this one, plus angle BDC. They're going to be equal to the whole triangle, a whole angle ADC. Linear pair postulate. When two angles, angle A plus a measurement of angle B are going to be equal to 180 degrees, they form, remember, a linear pair, and they're supplementary. And then we have the vertical angle theorem, which we just reviewed, angle 1 and 3 are congruent, angle 2 and 4 are congruent. We're not going to be using these theorems right now, but later on we will, I'm just going to explain it a little bit. Alternate interior angles, alternate exterior, and the interior angle theorem. Okay, I'm going to explain this afterwards on our next unit. We are going to use for, for actually unit two, we did use the segment congruent postulate where we have that um, segment AB, okay, is going to be congruent to EF. If you see here, they have the same measurement, right? They have one tick mark. And then the segment addition postulate, segment AB plus BC is going to be equal to all the segment. This one we also reviewed in class in several quizzes and in a real world explanation problem. And then we have these properties of equality that we're going to be using for problem number two that I'm going to explain. But first I need to explain what each one of them is about. The addition property of equality, that means that we isolate x. In order for me to leave x alone, I'm going to add plus 5 on both sides, right? So this cancel out plus 5, 5 plus 2, 7. The subtraction property of equality, you're going to subtract. In order for me to isolate x, I need to subtract negative 5 on both sides. So negative 5 plus 2 gives you negative 3. So I subtract it to get my answer. Multiplication property of equality. You're going to multiply the same number to both sides of the equation. So the 3 is dividing. What is the opposite? Multiplication. So 4 times 3, 12. I'll multiply to get my answer 12. Division property of equality. You divide the same number to both sides. I need to isolate x. The 3 and the x are multiplied. They're next to each other. What is the opposite? Division. So I divide both sides by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Substitution property of equality. To just substitute, they're giving you the y value, x plus 5. So you substitute here x plus, x plus 5 equals 10. So you substituted a value for a variable. And then we have the distributive property, which is that this is part of problem number two. I'm giving you a hint. You're going to have a number that is going to multiply whatever is in parentheses, three, three, negative 3 times x and negative 3 times negative 4. You have negative 3x, negative times negative is 12 positive. Combining like terms, when you simplify, 
Remember, they need to have the same variable and exponent. So 3 minus 5, negative 2x. Then the y's, negative 4y plus 2y. And um, then the numbers at the end. Okay, And then we have the reflexive property, where it's equal to each other. Symmetric, if a equals to b, then b equals to a. And the transitive property of equality, if a equals to b, and b equals to c, then a equals c. So this is the list that you're going to be using. We're not going to be using yet the triangles, so don't focus on that, just on the properties of equality, the definitions, the postulates. So now let's go back to problem, to the TGA. Let's take a look at problem two. So for this one, you're going to justify each step in solving the equation for x equals 7, x minus 3. So you're going to use the properties of equality, okay? So here, what are you doing? You're using what? I'm going to give you a hint. This is a distributive property, right? So distributive property of equality. Then what did they do from first step to seventh to the se uh, second step to get 2x and negative 21? I'm going to give you a hint. They did the multiplication property of equality. Then to get from the second to third step, what happened there? They isolated, right? The neg negative 7x, negative 7x, right? So negative 4, I'm sorry, 4x minus 7x, negative 3x equals negative 21. And then they isolated from step 3 to 4, they isolated x. Negative 3 and the x are multiplied. So what is the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I divide it by negative 3, negative 3. Negative 21 divided by negative 3 is 7. So they divide it, and then they get the answer. So this one's you're going to be using the properties of equality. So you distrib addition, distributed property, you can use a subtraction, addition, multiplication, division. Then for problem number 3, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about this one. And you're going to use the, the postulates, the definitions for this one, okay? So you have a diagram. You're, they're giving you that angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent. That means that they're going to have the same measurement. Then angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. Angle 2 and 3. That means that they're going to be equal to 180 degrees. So any straight line. So this is a straight line. They're going to be supplementary. So you're going to prove on your own that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent, that they have the same measurement. So let's analyze the information. Angle 2 and angle 4, that's information that's already given, right? So just follow, let's follow the order, given, okay? Angle 2 and angle 4, they're congruent, right? So that's the angle congruent postulate. They comparing two angles, they have the same measurement. And then, this was part of angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. That's information given to. Those are the easy ones. And then, angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. This is on your list. Definition of supplementary angle. So if you guys go to the first part, definitions, you're going to find this one there. They're giving two angles equal to 180. So use that list. If you don't have that list, you're not going to be able to do this. And on your own, you're going to do number five. I'm going to explain six. They're giving you two angles equal to 180. I'm repeating it. We did actually, this problem was the same one, well, similar, as uh, lesson 2.08. So make sure you look at that lesson. And then what are they doing here? They did something here. They added something. And then, look, they did another thing here. Right? Something changed here. Right? And then on step 9, what happened? I'm going to give you a hint here. They did the subtraction, right? Negative angle 4, negative subtraction property of equality. Right? They subtracted it, and they don't have anything. That's why the uh, measurement of angle 4 got um, 
cancelled. And then you have this telling you that they're congruent. So that's the end. Uh, everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, if you have any questions, please make sure you reach out to me. Okay, so make sure please that you use that uh, list. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Have a wonderful day, everyone.